One of the hardest decisions a new digital artist has to make is choosing an art application. Today, I'll make that easy by sharing my top seven digital art apps. Here are some of my criteria for this review. These apps are all Windows and Mac compatible. And while this review is geared more toward desktop apps, many of these will work on mobile devices as well. I've only selected dedicated art apps. For example, Affinity Photo and GIMP are image editing applications. I'm not counting free art applications, that's covered in another video, and the apps must still be in development with a recent version released in 2021. I'll do my best to rate these apps both objectively and subjectively so you can really get a feel for how they compare. I've scored each app in separate videos based on what I feel are important or useful features. I'll summarize the strengths, weaknesses, and unique features, but you can watch each of the individual reviews for more detail. In addition to an objective score, I'll also present these apps from worst to best based on how it feels for me to work with them. Art applications have come a long way since the last time I made this comparison in 2016, and I'm excited to bring you an updated video. So let's not waste any time and jump right into this review. Quick disclaimer, I received Corel Painter, Rebel, and Paintstorm Studio for free, I bought Fresco and Realistic Paint with my own money, and the other apps are trial versions. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. Number 7. Realistic Paint Studio Although Realistic Paint Studio has been released only recently, it's already one of the top art apps I've tried. This application is basically the core features from an older app called Paintstorm Studio, repurposed into a new application with a UI aesthetic that's more traditionally focused. The graphics-heavy UI itself is a work of art. Realistic Studio definitely stands out among the rest of the apps in this review. The main strength of Realistic Paint Studio is that it takes the traditional art aesthetic to the extreme. The highly intuitive visual UI is easy to get started with, even if you know nothing about digital art. It's also very inexpensive at only $25 retail. What's great about Realistic Paint also holds it back. It's overly focused on the traditional aesthetic, and therefore a lot of useful non-traditional tools are missing from it. The other issue with these graphical UIs is that it's often difficult to access brushes and features because they're buried in menus in order to keep the workspace tidy. And the last weakness is that some of the media in Realistic Paint covers the canvas opaquely rather than tinting it. For example, some blenders blend to opaque white and the markers cover rather than tint. What's unique about Realistic Paint are the gorgeous 3D rendered backgrounds, tools, and media swatches. The swatches change for each type of media. The oil and watercolor swatches can be blended and eroded on realistic palettes. You can test brushes on real world art from the brush selector, and you can preview your work in a variety of environments from desktops to easels. A hot mess with a lot of potential is how I would describe Realistic Paint Studio. If it weren't for how incomplete this application feels, I would have ranked it higher. It does feel more aesthetically pleasing to work in compared to some of the more mature applications, but it's going to feel like a chore to use if you have any prior experience with digital art. I'm excited to watch how this one progresses, but I'd like to see more features added before I'd recommend it for professional work. Number 6. Clip Studio Paint Pro Clip Studio Paint Pro is almost the exact opposite of the last application. Unlike all of the other art apps in this review, it is more focused on illustration rather than simulating natural media. While you certainly can use it to create fine art, I'd say Clip Studio Paint Pro is more useful for creating line art and simple backgrounds like you'd see in comics, manga, and animations. The main strength of Clip Studio Paint is that you can do a lot of different tasks with it. In addition to illustration tools, you can also animate, create vector art, and work with 3D resources. Clip Studio Paint also has the best perspective drawing tool I have used. And it's relatively affordable at only $49.99 retail. What's holding Clip Studio back the most is the weak brush engine. The brushes look dated and don't really compete with the natural media you can simulate in other apps. Again, we have a double-edged sword. You can do a lot with this software, but there are too many tools in one application. The UI feels very cluttered, and some of the text is in Japanese. Some features you won't find in the other apps in this review are integrated 3D resources, vector brush strokes you can edit, and comic panel and word bubble creation tools. Clip Studio Paint Pro is the most dated looking of all the apps in this review, and brush-wise, it's definitely the most basic, but it's also a Swiss army knife of an app because it can do so many different things. That's also a downside if you just want to paint. 
If you don't care for the traditional design aesthetic or the look of natural media brushes, and you want tools for manga and comic style art, Clip Studio Paint is awesome. It's worth noting that the animation and comic features have limitations unless you purchase the $219 Clip Studio EX version. But you can also animate in Krita, which is free, doesn't have any limitations, has better brushes, and also supports vector. The only reasons not to choose Krita over Clip Studio Paint are the comic panels, word bubbles, and maybe the 3D model integration. Number 5. Paintstorm Studio Paintstorm Studio is an interesting art application with a few unique tools and features you won't find anywhere else. Based on the look and features, I can't help but feel this app was inspired by Corel Painter. The main strength is that Paintstorm Studio is inexpensive at only $19 retail. But it also features the easiest drag and drop custom panels and shortcuts I have ever used. What makes me not like Paintstorm Studio is that the UI is sort of unappealing and dated looking. The brushes are nothing special, and multi-touch support is horrible. Some unique features about Paintstorm Studio or that it has an angle rotation that causes the stroke to revolve around the cursor. It also has an intuitive compass guide for drawing circles, multi-stroke symmetry, and you can colorize nearly all of the individual elements of the UI. Paintstorm Studio feels like a slightly innovative Corel Painter clone, only several years behind. I'd have more praise for this application if it were five years ago, but now it just feels stale. I'm not sure what's going on with this app since they're still adding new features, but also porting many of the features to realistic Paint Studio. I get the feeling Paintstorm's days are numbered. For the price, it's not bad. Aside from the lack of natural media brushes, it's a well-rounded application, but so is Krita and that's free. Plus Krita has better brushes and better features. Personally, I wouldn't even pay $19 for this and I'd get realistic Paint Studio or Krita instead. Number four, Art Rage. ArtRage was one of the earliest art apps to break the mold and create a highly graphical UI that is based around the traditional media aesthetic. It was also one of the first apps to have a decent simulation of impasto or paint thickness. Some strengths of this application are that it features a simple, intuitive UI with a clean design. It also does a decent job of simulating impasto paint depth. It really looks and feels like you're smudging around paint rather than pushing pixels. As with realistic paint, ArtRage's minimal UI means that some of the controls are buried, and there is a lack of features. It's a little difficult to use on desktops, but not too bad. That's not all ArtRage has in common with realistic paint. It also has relatively poor drawing tablet support compared to the other apps in this review. I found pen pressure, tilt, and multi-touch to be a little buggy. Development also feels like it is lagging the competition. What's unique to ArtRage are the graphical tool cursors and the built-in collaborative painting. It also has some unique watercolor dynamics. ArtRage used to be pretty good, and I used it a lot in the past, especially on iPad, but I think it has fallen behind a lot. What used to set it apart was the traditional aesthetic of the tools and UI, and the cross-compatibility between iPad and Windows, but now it all looks rather poor in comparison to what some of the other apps in this review can do. I'm just not impressed anymore. Even if they invested in a major upgrade, it's a crowded field at this point. There's not much room for mediocre art apps. At the price point of $80, and given the current feature set, it's difficult to recommend this over something else. I haven't tried the collaborative painting feature yet, but that might be incentive to buy ArtRage. Number 3. Adobe Fresco Adobe Fresco is one of the newest art applications, and also one of the oldest. That's because it's essentially the art features in Photoshop in a dedicated app that is optimized for mobile touchscreen devices. Although it's geared toward pen-enabled tablets like iPads, Mobile Studio Pros, and Surface Pros, it's also compatible with desktop computers. The obvious strength here is that Fresco is Photoshop's art features in a dedicated art app. If you're using a mobile or desktop device with a touchscreen, you'll find the minimal UI easy to use. Fresco also has the second best fluid media simulation I've tried. The main issue I have with Fresco is that it is difficult to use on a desktop. For example, many keyboard shortcuts are not supported, so you'll be scratching your head wondering why they don't work. Although it has gotten better, Fresco is just too optimized for mobile touchscreen devices. Optional desktop-friendly features really should be a priority. Another gripe is that you have to use Photoshop to fully edit brushes, though that may change in later versions. And although most Photoshop brushes can be imported for use in Fresco, some Photoshop properties are currently not supported. Depending on how you look at it, 
The $20 a month subscription might be a turnoff as well. I pay for Photoshop anyway, so it doesn't make a difference to me. What makes Adobe Fresco stand out is its Photoshop cross compatibility, cloud storage, and an on-screen modifier button you can hold to toggle to erasing and other modes. Adobe Fresco has a decent natural media simulation, and the UI is clean and feels great to work on with a touchscreen device. On desktop, not so much. But it's not so bad that it doesn't rank high on my list. Remember, I'm ranking these based on how difficult it is for me to work comfortably in these applications. Since it's Adobe working on Fresco, and they seem to not be adding new art features to Photoshop, I tend to think this app is going to get really good really fast. The rate at which they add new features is pretty good. I think this is a not so subtle hint from Adobe that Photoshop is no longer going to be developed as an art app. Number two, Rebel. Rebel is one of the newer art apps to the scene, but it made a pretty big splash, no pun intended. Rebel features the most realistic simulation of fluid media. The look and behavior of its watercolor are unrivaled. Rebel's greatest strength is its superior fluid media simulation, but it also has a very balanced UI that is easy to use. I like the advanced color picker, which can be customized in a lot of different ways. It's a shame that Rebel makes simple tasks like masking more difficult in order to maintain the traditional art aesthetic. I get that masking fluid might be appealing to traditional artists, but it would be better just to offer a standard layer mask. I also find the UI is a little stiff. I wish I could customize it more. One thing you won't see in any other art app in this review are the realistic looking paint drips that respond to the tilt of your tablet if it has an accelerometer. Paintstorm Studio has drips, but they feel much less dynamic. You can actually control the drip properties and direction in Rebel. Rebel 5 even features nanopixel resizing, which can leverage AI to upscale your artwork and add microscopic detail to both the paint and the surface you're painting on. A full screen grayscale preview is also something you won't see in the other art apps. Rebel is amazing to say the least. The attention to detail in their natural media simulation is impressive. There is no better fluid media simulation on the market. And their impasto is getting pretty good, though it lacks some customization features. It feels really nice to paint in Rebel, and the UI is fairly intuitive to use. However, I always feel like I'm missing core features and that slows me down. Nevertheless, it's an excellent choice at only $89.99 retail for the standard version, and $149.99 for the pro version, which has more features. Number one, Corel Painter. Corel Painter is one of the most mature art apps on the market. It may even be older than you. Corel Painter has had a lot of time to perfect the details of the natural painting experience, and it shows. Nearly all art apps are trying to be painter in one way or another. Painter's strengths are that it has one of the most customizable and exportable UIs, it has the best impasto control, it's the most compatible with Wacom tablets, it has the most in-depth brush controls, and it has the best variety of blenders. In addition to doing an excellent job of simulating brushes, Painter also excels at simulating brush media. You can create opaque paint, transparent paint, thick paint, glazing, hard media, and more. Painter's Achilles heel is that it is one of the oldest art applications ever. It contains too many useless legacy features that make it harder to find the good stuff. Plus, Painter is missing a few key features like mesh warp and advanced color options. Although you usually can get it on sale, it is the priciest app on this list at $429 retail. Painter has some unique particle brushes that can follow the laws of physics. You can create a huge variety of brushes just from this brush engine. There is also a thick paint, which is some of the best impasto on the market. I've tried a lot of art applications, and Corel Painter feels the most well-rounded for my needs. However, it does feel like it's falling behind in terms of natural media simulation. There are other apps that feel better to paint in aesthetically, but they lack many of the core features that I rely on. Painter is really the best choice if you want a good balance of traditional feel and digital art tools. Painter's customization features are also one of the reasons I like this app so much. I can make quite dramatic changes to the UI to create an optimal layout. Because of its age, the application itself is not quite as easy to update as newer applications. However, each version gets closer and closer to perfection while the other apps just have to catch up. And the rate of development is consistent. If I had to pick one app to take with me on a deserted island, it's a hard choice between Corel Painter, which I'm the most comfortable with, and Rebel, which really offers more in terms of aesthetics. 
On one hand, I can work in Painter and complete a painting without any snags. I know I could paint anything I like with the tools available in a relatively efficient way, but I also might get bored with it since I've been using it for some time. Rebel has a huge advantage over Painter in terms of realistic media simulation, and while I do enjoy feeling like I'm really painting with paint, there are some simple things like masking that require too much effort. I'd hate to always have to do these unnecessary chores that interrupt my flow. There are also many practical features missing from Rebel that I find more useful than dripping paint. Also, Painter is much easier to customize, and I feel like I can really tailor the workspace to my needs, so I think I'd probably stick with Painter. Now let's compare the objective score for these apps. For the most part, a higher score means the app has a lot of features that perform well. As you can see, Corel Painter has the highest score at 236 of 273 possible points. In second is Clip Studio Paint Pro at 213. In third is Art Rage at 198, which narrowly beats Rebel in fourth at 196, and Paintstorm Studio in fifth at 192. I personally think Rebel is far better than the other two, but this is why I included an objective score. In sixth place is Adobe Fresco at 143, and in last place is Realistic Paint Studio with only 93 points. It's just too light on features to score very high. I expect these scores may shift quite dramatically as newer apps add more features and some of the older ones fall behind. That concludes my review of the top 7 paid digital art apps. I put links to these in the video description. For a more in-depth analysis of each app, check out the whole playlist. And have a look at my top free art apps review because there are some good options there too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.